from uh, Philippians chapter 4. We will read verse 6 and the verses surrounding that as well. Philippians 4, we'll begin at verse 1 and read through to verse 7. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Eodia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So far, the word of our God. Brothers and sisters of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Anxiety and prayer, these are two things that that most of us probably struggle with from time to time to one degree or the other. We are at times prone to worry or to be anxious, and at other times we acknowledge that prayer can be difficult to come by for whatever reason. In our text, Paul addresses anxiety and prayer, and he does so together, as we will see, because these two things, anxiety and prayer, are very much related and connected. I summarize God's word to you as follows. Anxious hearts pray to God. We'll look at two points, anxiety and prayer. Now, in the verses before our text, if you uh, recall and if you're a member here, you'll notice that or you'll remember that in verses 4 to 6, they're all connected. There's four commands in those verses, and then in the middle, there's uh, a statement of fact that the Lord is near. So last time, we looked at the command, rejoice in the Lord, and then let your reasonableness and gentleness or gentleness be known to all. And, and underlining that command, you, you recall, was that statement that the Lord is near. Why do we rejoice? Because the Lord is near. Why do we show gentle reasonableness to all? Because the Lord is near. And now after giving that, that underlying statement that the Lord is near, then we, we find two more commands in, in verse 6. Uh, negative, the, the one is negative, do not be anxious about everything. I sh- do not be anxious about anything, I should say. Now, to be anxious here means to be unduly worried about things, including and especially the things that we simply cannot control. We recognize here that Paul is following the teaching of our Lord and Savior in Matthew chapter 6, which we read together. Three times the the Lord Jesus gave the the command, do not be anxious. And he uses the word uh, anxious five times in those short verses that we read together. Do not be anxious about life, about clothing, about what to eat, about what to drink, about tomorrow. Now here, rather than than listing a number of things like our Savior does, Paul covers everything with those two words about anything. Do not be anxious, he says, about anything. In other words, be, be anxious for nothing. Nothing at all. Don't worry about anything. And I think we all recognize that that is a very, very hard command. 
Sometimes a person will say, I'm an anxious person. And there certainly is truth in that. Sometimes you can see from an early age that one of your children is far more anxious and prone to worry than another. And that often remains, goes into teenage years and on into adulthood as well. That is a hard cross to bear. It is also true that we all worry from, from time to time. We all struggle with the kind of anxiety that Paul is speaking about here in our text. Who hasn't worried? Whether it's about making ends meet, whether it's about making friends or knowing if you're going to belong or fit into a group. Perhaps failing an important test keeps you up at night or an important thing in, in your business or in your family. Indeed, who has not lost sleep worrying? And so this command touches and challenges every one of us. Maybe you remember the story of two sisters, Martha and Mary, in Luke chapter 10. Martha opened her home to the Lord Jesus uh, as he taught there. And as he taught, what did Martha do? Martha spent all of her time working, making sure that everything was right for her special guest, her Savior, our Savior. And all the while, what was Mary, her sister, doing? Sitting at the feet of Jesus. She did nothing to help her sister. And when Martha points this out to Jesus, he doesn't side with Martha, does he? That's because behind Martha's busy preparations, Jesus saw a deep-seated worry and anxiety within her. She was so anxious to have everything right in her home and in place and, and neat and tidy for the Lord Jesus that she forgot about him. She forgot about spending time with him. And so Jesus says in response to her in Luke 10, 41 to 42, he says, Martha, Martha, you, you are worried and upset, literally anxious, same word as in our text, you are worried and upset or anxious about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. You see, Mary knew that preparations needed to be done. I'm sure she did. But she also knew that that one thing that she needed, more than anything else, was to be with Jesus. To sit at his feet, to soak in his grace, and to bask in his love. And may that be so for us. Oh, there are so many things to worry about. So many things that can make our hearts anxious. Your marriage, your kids, your business, the church. The, the list is, is endless. And it's in those moments that we need to resist the urge to, to join Martha in a sea of worry and anxiety. Instead, Paul calls us here, God calls us here in his word to, to let go of our worries, to join Mary, so to say, and sit at the feet of Jesus. And we do so in the awareness and, and the confidence that the Lord is at hand, that the, the Lord is near. That is the, the indicative and the fact that not only underlies the, the first two commands to rejoice and to, to be gentle and reasonable, no, that the way that, that we can deal with anxiety is also remembering that the Lord is at hand, that the Lord is near. Indeed, this is so key to dealing with worry. When we are consumed with worry and anxious thoughts overwhelm us, it is often because we forget. We forget that the Lord is near, nearer, still nearer, close to thy heart. When we remember that truth, when we rest in the confidence that God is near caring for us, providing for us, that, or, or then, what really is there for us to be anxious about? What need is there for us to worry? Now, this command about not being anxious is immediately followed up with another command, also in verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
Now notice here that the command isn't simply that we are to pray. That's not the, the command. The command is to let your requests be made known to God. That's the imperative here. That's the command in the text. In prayer, we do all sorts of things. We praise God for, for who He is, for what He has done. We confess our sins to Him. And Paul, no doubt, assumes that we will do that in our prayers as well. But here he specifically tells us to let our requests be, no, be made known to God, to ask God for things. And notice uh, the words uh, in, in everything there. Do not be anxious about anything, and then, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. That is, whatever circumstance you're in, Whatever trouble you are facing, whatever need you have, take it to the Lord in prayer. Present your requests, whatever they are, to Him in prayer. What a beautiful thing for Paul, for God to command us. It shows the kind of God that we have. Our God is not stingy. He doesn't say, you know, you, you have a quota of about 10 requests that you can make a week. No. No. No, God is not stingy. He is a generous God. He wants us to, to come before Him with, with all of our requests and to lay them before Him and to ask Him for what we need, starting with the Spirit to work in our hearts and in our lives. And John and Michelle, if I can address you as parents, what a privilege you have to teach little Fallon that indeed your God is a generous God Teach her to pray, teach her to lay her requests also before the Lord in time, along with your other daughters as well. Beyond needing to ask for the Spirit and for God's grace, we need to, we need to ask God for a desire to, to honor Him with our whole lives. We need to ask Him for grace when we, uh, to forgive others. We need to ask Him to work humility in our hearts, to acknowledge our shortcomings and our struggles. We need to ask that He would encourage us to persevere in the midst of a struggle or a hardship, that He would give us comfort in the face of loss and death and loneliness and, and heartache, that He would give us a willingness to deny our own wills and obey the Lord's without any murmuring and complaining. We can go on and on, but, but I think you get the point here. We are a needy lot, and God knows that, and so He wants us to lay our requests before Him knowing that indeed He is a generous God with unlimited resources and with a, a burning desire to answer our prayers. Yes, may that be your motivation today, brothers and sisters, and mine, to get on our knees, to go on a walk and pray to the Lord and present your requests to Him. Now, we must add here that this command to present your request to the Lord is directly connected to the previous one about not being anxious. That's clear because right in the middle of this verse, in between these two commands, is the word but. Do not be anxious about anything but, and then let your request be made known to God. And the Spirit here through the Apostle Paul is, is teaching us that indeed there is a connection between prayer and anxiety. Indeed, as if we look at the times that we've been most worried, often we will discover, won't we, that our anxiety, our undue worry was made worse or it was amplified because we spent more time worrying and less time praying, less time presenting our requests to God. We spent less time with the Lord and more time with our worries. Now, we need to be careful here because I don't want to give the impression and we shouldn't give the impression that prayer is some sort of magic potion that will somehow remove all of our anxieties. And we shouldn't give the impression that, that if after you have prayed and, and your anxiety and your worry lingers or maybe even gets worse, that you're not praying hard enough or that you must not actually be a Christian. No. No. There, there are many Christians, you, you know them, maybe you're, you're one of them. There are many Christians who are faithful in prayer and yet struggle with ongoing worry 
and anxiety. And yet, as as I'm sure many anxious hearts can attest to, prayer indeed is a powerful tool when it comes to dealing with worry and anxiety. Prayer does something to our anxious hearts. Through prayer, that the Spirit does help us to, to calm our fears. Prayer helps us to focus less on ourselves and more on the awesome God that we have. Prayer reminds us and assures us that the Lord is near, nearer, still nearer, close to thy heart. And so in times when, when worry and anxiety are, are high, we, we need to learn to pray, to present our requests to God, to even confess to him that, that, we are, that we are worried and that our anxious hearts are getting the better of us. We sang a similar thing in Psalm 94, maybe you noticed that. When anxiety was great, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me, or your consolation brought joy to my soul. What beautiful words of hope. Anxious hearts rejoice. Anxious hearts pray to God. Take your anxiety, your worries, your fears to Him in prayer. Do so also in the awareness that all of our sins and our struggles, including all of the times that we have lost sight of God's nearness and instead were filled with worry and anxiety, Christ has died. And for all the times that we have failed to to come before God in prayer and present Him with the requests that we ought to have, have requested of Him, we are forgiven in and through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. And in and through Christ, we can rest also in the confidence that God will not abandon us. It's even even when the worry and anxiety gets the better of us. We can rest in in the confidence that that even when we neglect to, to pray at times, that these failures too are forgiven through the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For that He died. And may the awareness of Christ's forgiveness, then stir us on forward with a a renewed desire to not let anxiety hold sway and to be faithful and fervent in prayer. And may we also rest in the confidence, brothers and sisters, that one day, one day all, all your worry and your anxiety that still lingers and clings to your heart despite your best efforts and your prayers, one day it will all be gone. When Jesus comes back, and may that fill us with hope, but may it especially fill those for whom the Lord, for whatever reason, allows anxiety and worry to hold sway. If that is true for you, dear child of God, may our Father in heaven give you the grace to persevere and to look forward to that great day when Jesus comes in all of his glory. Yes, then he will remove whatever anxiety and worry still remains in us, against our wills. So pray also for that day for Jesus to come back. And so people of God, as we come to an end, be encouraged, be challenged today. Do not be anxious. Do not let worry grip your heart. The Lord is near. He is bigger. He is more powerful than all of your worries put together, than all of your fears. But in those moments when, 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 uh, when you are worried, don't forget to pray. Take your anxiety to the Lord in prayer and, and may He give you peace. We haven't looked at verse 7, but it, it ends on a, a note of peace. And the, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts. Do all this in the, the awareness of the gospel. God doesn't hold our failures and our struggles and our, our, our worries our lack of prayers against us. In Christ, we have been set free from all of our sins and struggles and brokenness. And so go forward with confidence and go forward with that confidence that indeed one day all of our anxious thoughts, all of our prayerless moments will be no more. Come, Lord Jesus, Maranatha. Amen.